Okay, so um, now that we're done with the fire animations, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, delete these guys. And we're going to move on to the last particle, okay? So uh, let's drag him out on stage and let's kind of investigate what he works like. All right, so uh, I'm going to grab my ribbon trails animation and I'm just going to drag it on the stage and take a look. Okay. Now, it may seem like this is uh, pretty complicated, right? Like we've got these, these kind of billowing trails and we've got this particle coming out and all sorts of stuff. But um, in reality, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, the biggest thing is that it's kind of two systems that are linked together. And um, outside of that, it's, it's really straightforward. Okay, so, uh, so let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look at what it's got going on. Um, so I'm going to grab my ribbon trails and I'm just going to take a look. So as you can see, the first thing you'll notice is that there are two systems, okay? And um, if I wanted to be proper about it, I would name uh, the systems so that they make sense. So this will be the, um, I don't know, rock. And this will be the trail. Okay, so uh, so that's really really it. So we've got a rock and a trail, and the the trail is spawned by the rock. Okay, so inside of here, you're going to notice that we have this trail spawn uh, node, and basically all it does is say, okay, well, what subsystem do you want me to use? And it it just grabs the subsystem of trail from it, okay? Um, but we'll get into how all this, this works, um, and this is the stuff you need for the collision detection. Outside of that, it's all stuff you've seen before. Emitter rate, material billboard, um, you know, a size, a color, a velocity. Um, I don't know if we've really covered the velocity box much, but that's good because we'll get a chance to use it now. Um, and the position box, which you've seen before, okay? And then the trail, is nothing you've not seen before either. Um, so we've got an emitter rate, we've got a material billboard, we've got a size, we've got a color, a little bit of random rotation, and uh, a distance fade, um, which you don't even need. You can actually just remove that. It doesn't actually benefit it much um, at all. It basically just makes it so that as it gets really far away, it, it fades out. Um, but that's easy. We'll, we'll, we'll go through it all. All right. So. Um, so that's it. So that's the uh, that's the basics of the system, and let's go ahead and uh, build it. All right. So actually, yeah, it's kind of confusing to have that thing blowing up all over the place. So I'm just gonna start afresh. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna want to do is the same thing we do for every particle effect. Um, we're gonna go right click, and we're gonna go create, and we're gonna go particle, and we're gonna say. Um, uh, what do they call it? Ribbon trail. So I'll call it ribbon trail two. Okay, and um, keep it consistent with the underscore. Okay, so now I've got ribbon trail two created. Um, to make this work, uh, the first thing I'm going to need is a material billboard. So, I, well, you don't even need that technically. You could just do it with a, a simple particle also, but I, I, I'm trying to make it a little nice. So I'm going to grab this uh, card and I'm going to use the billboard to make it so that it's not just a little particle. It's going to be an actual rock. Okay. So I've got this little uh, red rock that's kind of like a burning, smoldering, you know, red uh, kind of molten rock. <coughs> and I'm going to use it as my diffuse mat. Okay. So um, then I'm just going to set my color, my size to something like one. Uh, see how that feels in size. And now I can put this on the stage and see what we've got. So where's the ribbon trail two? And we'll have the typical rock not going anywhere. And uh, that's what we've got. Okay. So as usual, um, we have to give it a movement to start seeing it do something. So and um, so let's go ahead and do that. So ribbon trail two, I'm going to go and give it a movement. So I'm going to go, uh, but in this case, we're not going to use gravity this time. We're going to use a velocity. So we're going to go ahead and hit a box velocity. 
and let's just go ahead and save that and see what it starts doing. Okay, so as you can see, this pushes out in all directions based off its starting position. Um, and it already is kind of what we want, right? Um, the only real thing is we wanted to throw them more up in the air. So let's make the Z velocity, rather than having the possibility of pushing it downward, we're only going to push it upward, okay? So we're going to say a box minimum of one and a box maximum of something like three. And let's see how that works. Okay, so there we go. We're starting to get it to make a plume. Um, and we want these outside ones there too, you know, because those are going to be helpful in making it not so perfect, right? Like um, they'll make it kind of splay out to the sides as well. And let's make this one more like five and our minimum velocity more like two. Let's take a look at it and see how that feels. So yeah, now we're starting to get it to do something. Now, um, the problem is, is it's not coming back down to earth, right? So we want it to feel like it's got that, that, that draw on it. So what we're going to do is we're now going to add our gravity. So acceleration and gravity. And once we put that on, we should start to feel it looking pretty good. So it's doing what we want, but it's not quite perfect, right? Like it's it's definitely going a little bit too slow but fast, right? Like it's it's kind of like falling over quickly and it's kind of feeling a little weird. So um, so let's just increase our, our upward velocity. Let's make it something more like 10 since now it has to fight gravity. And now it's starting to feel a little better. And let's make this more like 5 and let's save that and see how that feels. And now it's starting to feel a lot better. So um, what we now need is a little more outward velocity. So let's go negative 5, negative 5, 5, and 5. And let's see how that feels. We should start to get kind of a better you know, overall feeling. Let's make our size of our particles something more reasonable, something more like, I don't know, 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 since one is just ginormous. Yeah, that's feeling better. Um, maybe even more like 0.5. Okay, that's good. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a range of 0.3 to 0.5 just to give it some variation. And it's starting to feel pretty good. So um, the next thing we want to do is increase its particle life. So let's go ahead and make the particle life between three and five seconds. And let's increase our number total to something like a thousand um, and see what we got. All right, that's pretty good. So now what we need to do is lower the rate or make it more erratic. So let's go one and 10. And that's starting to feel pretty good. I think we could probably go something more like one and five. And that's going to feel a little better. Yeah, I'm starting to like this already. It's starting to feel good. Okay, so um, so that's going to be basically it. Um, maybe like these feel nice and lofty. Um, what I did on those is I just actually reduced the amount of gravity. I didn't make them quite realistic, so I made them more like negative five gravity. So you can play with that. Um, that's going to make it feel more lofty, right? Um, and then you can actually lower your your speed down uh, to something more like, you know, between 5 and, let's say, 7 or 6, or 4 and 6. And you can lower these down to something more like 3, 3, 3, and 3. And you should start to get that slower, kind of more lofty feeling uh, velocity out of it. Huh, that's pretty good. I kind of like that. That's starting to feel good. Okay. So now that we have pretty much all that working, um, we can start playing with the physics. So let's go ahead and go right click and let's go into um,
collision, and we're going to need a collision uh, query. And the important one on this is to set this very high. So this is how many queries it's going to do every frame. So if between one frame and another frame it passes through the floor, it literally won't calculate it as a collision. So I usually set this to something more like 100. Um, now, again, this is very costly, so you have to be careful with how high you set that. Um, it's just something to keep in mind uh, that if you really ramp this up, you, you'll get more accuracy, but you will cost performance. So for something like this, it's not going to matter so much. Um, but in a game where you're really, you know, every, every frame tick matters, you know, you might want to be a little more cautious with this number. Um, but for now, while you're learning, just, you know, set it to a thousand. It doesn't matter, right? Um, so just as long as you're getting that, that, that number high. And if your, your collisions aren't happening, that's what you need to check is this number right here. So once we have the query, we can go ahead and go collision result, okay? And the result is now going to make it start to interact with the world. Once you have both of those parts in there, you'll see that the physics start to work, okay? Um, and what you can do here is you can kind of mess with things like your collision and restitution. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's up to you. These are just variables. So friction will obviously make it, you know, slow down more. And the restitution, I believe, is how much it'll bounce. So if it's got a high restitution, it's going to bounce much greater. If it's got a low restitution, it will bounce much less. So if we were to set this to zero, it basically won't bounce. It'll just, uh, you know, hit the floor and stop. So um, I think the standard restitution is something like 0.5. We'll do something more like 0.4 um, and see how that feels. Because I don't think a rock is going to bounce all that much. Our friction is way too high, though. That's why they're not moving, right? So let's set our friction to something like 0.2. And in default values are usually pretty good, I find. Um, Again, it's very dependent on what you're doing with it, uh, but yeah, you've got those controls to work with, all right? And you can actually even rotate them so that when they hit, they bounce and rotate. All right, so that's that, and um, that's the particle effects. Okay, for the, uh, I'm sorry, that is the emitter, right? So that's our, our first part of our particle effect. Um, now what we need to do is actually make the trails. Okay, so that's actually the easier part. So we're just going to go ahead and add another system. And we're going to call this, you know, uh, spawner. Or uh, we can call this main, whatever. It doesn't matter what you call it. I'm going to call it main. And this one I'm going to call trail, just to make it obvious for us to follow. So um, inside of main, we still have to add one last thing for it to work. Okay, so let's go right click, and let's go spawn, and then trail. Okay, and now it's going to be asking for what do I want to spawn? Well, we want to spawn the trail particle effect. So if we save that, we should start to see... Um, some stuff happening here. So um, in the trail, we want a certain number of particles per second. This overrides the particles per second that is going to be in your emitter rate. Okay. In fact, we may not even need an emitter rate. I think we can actually get rid of that. Um, so particles per second, let's go ahead and make it something like 10. And as soon as we do this, we should start to see particles being born. Okay, good. So now we're seeing our particles being born. Um, but they're not really doing what we want them to do. So what we want to do is give them a little bit of uh, inherited velocity. So if we do it as one, it's probably going to be too much. Yeah, see how they're just way too inherited velocity. So let's go ahead and lower that to something like 0.5. And let's go ahead and hit save. And now we should start to see what we want. Okay. Um, now, the other problem that we're having is that we're running out of... Um, 
we're running out of particles. So in the trail, we want to set this total to something ridiculous like 10,000 to start, okay? Just so that we know we never run out um, as we're, we're trying to test here and figure this stuff out, okay? So as you can see, we're now seeing trails behind each of the particles. Um, and what I think we want to do is actually on that, on that emitter uh, trail spawn, we actually don't want much velocity to be inherited at all. So let's go ahead and try point. Yeah, that's going to feel a lot better. Okay, so much less inherited velocity. Um, I have it at point 0.1. In fact, a zero might even be better. Let's try that next. Um, the nice thing about the inherited velocity is that it does kind of move with it. Um, but that said, this might be good enough. Um, let's put it at point 0.1. Point 0.1 looked good to me. All right, so at point 0.1, we're starting to get that nice feel. And we're kind of getting there. Okay, so now we're just going to go ahead and put a billboard on this. So let's go ahead and grab that uh, that smoke texture and save it. And actually, let's add an additive blend. It's already there. It's just uh, not very big, so it looks almost exactly the same as the the square particle. So with the additive blend, we're starting to get our, our nice uh, look. So let's go um, into the size and make this something a little more reasonable, like, I don't know, 0.3 is probably going to do it, or 0.5 maybe, 0.5. A little too big. Let's make it 0.3. Let's save that and see how it looks. Still a little too big. So point two is probably going to do it. Yep, point two is looking perfect. Um, so the the problem is we're not getting enough spawns. So let's get a lot more spawns out of this. We're we're spawning ten particles per second right now. Let's make it something more like a hundred. And save that. And now we're really getting it to look good. Okay, good. So that's what we kind of want. Um, now, the next problem that we're having is um, what's our next problem here? Our next problem is that it's not really blending right. So let's take a look at the material billboard. I've got the additive blend on. Let's turn on the one bit alpha and turn it off again. Not sure why it's so bright. Yeah, that didn't do anything. Um, so, well, there's two things we can do. Uh, we can reduce the particle scale over its lifetime. That's the first thing we can do. Um, and let's save that out. And now we'll have that, that kind of smaller tail on it. So that's starting to feel better already. Um, and what we need to do now is the opacity. So let's go into color. Um, let's set our colors properly. So let's do like a dark red where it starts. Let's move that over to the left. Let's add another one. Make this like that bright whitish yellow again. Actually, I still have it up here. I'll just grab that. Let's put that all the way on the end. Oops. And let's put a middle value of a nice bright orange. Save that. And we're starting to get somewhere. Okay, great. So uh, the last thing is I just think that the, uh, the opacity is just a little bit too heavy. So let's go into our color and let's, um, let's kind of mess with the opacity a bit. So I'm going to lower that down in the start so that it's never fully opaque. 
and I'm going to lower this uh, this this end of its lifetime opacity, you know, way down. And now we should start to feel pretty good. Yep. So that's pretty much it. Um, that pretty much does what we wanted to do. Um, maybe we're spawning a few too many. Well, 100 particles per second isn't really a problem. Um, let's try turning off this inherited velocity for a second again. Just take a look and see how it feels. Yeah, I actually like that better. Okay. All right, so that pretty much uh, sums it up. Um, that should teach you everything you need to know. Now you could even add more, um, you know, particles to this system if you wanted to add like a smoke trail too. You could do add system, and you can do another add uh, spawn trail, and we can call this one system three, and we can put you know, smoke on here too. So let's grab our smoke, and in here we can you know, make this total again something like 10,000, and we should start to see particles being born here soon. Oops. So material billboard. Um, probably just too small, so let's change our size to something more like 0 0.3, 0 0.3, give that a test. Oh, it's not moving along with it yet, so why is it not moving along with it? Oh, because we're not actually spawning any. So um, let's go ahead and make our particles per second something like 100. Let's delete our emitter rate, remove component. We should actually do that for the one above it as well. So let's de delete that emitter rate. It's not necessary. Um, and let's just adjust our color to be like a dark black. And the opacity we're gonna set way down on this guy. And we're just going to set our size a little higher. And we'll add some variance. We'll add some variance to this. 0.5. Maybe even more. Let's add something more like 0.9. All right. Let's just make it a solid one. That's definitely too much. 0 0.8, 0 0.7 is probably going to be perfect. Yep, that's pretty good. Um, Color is good. Let's additive blend it. Hmm. Don't know that that actually benefited anything might have actually made it worse. Let's get rid of the additive blend. It's definitely spawning too many, so let's go ahead and say um, on the emitter, we're going to spawn just a few less. Let's make it more like, I don't know, uh, nine. let's make it 50. starting to feel better. All right, so that's the basics. Um, and of course, you can tweak this till the cows come home and uh, make it really, really nice. Um, I didn't even add this secondary trail. Uh, I was just kind of showing you that you can. 
so you can do you know additional layering effects of uh, trails as well all right so uh, before I make this video just way too long I'm gonna call it quits and say um, ta ta for now and I'll see you guys next time uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did please like it um, and uh, let me know